In this video, we'll be repeating the general introduction tutorial where it demonstrated the insertion of choice questions and will elaborate on the subject. We'll be showing you a number of powerful features related to this choice function. We'll discuss opting for radio buttons versus a drop-down. If your model contract provides for several text options, you can trigger them in the questionnaire. The Triggered Choice questions will provide answer options for each of your model contract's clause options and during the Q&A they can appear either as a series of radio buttons requiring only one answer out of several options, or as a drop-down with the same optionality, or as a series of checkboxes of which none, one or several options can be chosen. Note that if a choice tree contains only one answer, the questionnaire will automatically present a checkbox. Creating multiple choice questions begins with the insertion of choice options on the left-hand side. If you were to insert the corresponding tag immediately on the right-hand side, you would find an error message saying you need to start on the left-hand side. To create a choice tree, place the cursor in the relevant contract clause on the left-hand side and click Insert a Choice Element. Enter a choice name for the choice tag in the contract clause. Formulate the question that will appear in the Q&A. If desired, enter an explanatory note or instruction. Click Insert and you'll be asked to insert the first answer option. The name that you insert will in principle become the text of the answer option provided during the questionnaire. You can insert further choice answer options as desired. From the choice tree or an existing answer option on the left hand side, click Insert a Choice Answer. The final step in creating a multiple choice Q&A question is the insertion of the choice tag in the contract clause on the right side. The eventual formatting of the clause is determined by the clause in which the choice tag is inserted. After inserting the Q&A elements, you can check in the underwater screen of the questionnaire whether the results were inserted correctly. The choice between radio buttons versus a drop-down is less simple. There are a number of things to take into consideration. Firstly, radio buttons will fill the Q&A screen, so therefore, in case of a relatively long list of options, rather opt for a drop-down. Secondly, answering a drop-down requires two clicks, whilst a radio button question requires one click. Therefore, if you want to discourage deviation from the proposed default answer, you might prefer offering a drop-down. Do realise, however, that a drop-down hides the available answer options, which could also trigger the user's curiosity, and once the user opens the drop-down, he may also change the answer. Therefore, in a case of a variety of choice answer options, you would facilitate the Q&A by choosing radio buttons. Whether to opt for checkboxes rather than radio buttons or drop-downs is a simple matter. Checkboxes allow the user to insert more than one option or none at all. Inserting more than one answer is not possible with radio buttons or drop-downs. Note that there is a fourth option resulting in no text being inserted in the resulting contract. This is simply achieved by leaving the resulting clause completely void. If both the choice answer option delivers no text and the choice tag is not accompanied by any text, the We Agree wizard won't insert any text or clause when a user chooses this fourth option during the Q&A. There also won't be an empty paragraph with redundant section numbering. This option, no clause inserted, as one of the choice options is more powerful than you might think, so keep it in mind. This concludes the video tutorial on choice questions. Please also watch the video tutorial elaborating on a few advanced applications of choices and checkboxes.